Morning. My name is Julie Kafetz. I lead the North America business for Tractable AI. At our very core, we are a company that takes artificial intelligence breakthroughs and brings them to the real world. We were founded in 2014 by a number of folks who were prize-winning researchers at the top artificial intelligence labs in the UK, places like Oxford, Cambridge, and Imperial. And for the last five years, we have been laser focused on the task of using artificial intelligence to automate auto damage appraisal. Now, as some of you know, auto damage appraisal is a very complex expert task. It can take humans something like 30, 45 minutes to look at a car, identify the different parts that have been damaged, figure out how damaged they are and how they need to be fixed. Our AI does this in seconds. And today, this is what you will see. Now, what does this mean? For you all, it means much shorter cycle times. It means much greater consistency in your appraisals. And ultimately, what matters most is that this means helping your customers get back on the road more quickly and more safely. Now, today at Tractable, we, we've deployed this AI across nine markets. That would be the US, Canada, six countries in Europe, and Japan as well. We've processed hundreds of thousands of claims. We've raised $30 million in funding, including from leading growth equity investors. And we have a team of about 100 folks across London, New York, and Tokyo. We're very excited about, about this trajectory. Now, I often get, a, get asked, what sets Tractable apart? There are a lot of folks talking about AI. Why you guys? And I really believe it is the intersection of these three things. First is a, a world-class machine learning team. About 15% of our staff are core machine learning researchers, PhDs from leading laboratories who are very excited to build a technology like this. But we're not just a shop of technologists. We combine machine learning expertise with industry knowledge. So we have people who have spent decades repairing cars, appraising cars, and really know how to handle a vehicle. And those people work hand in hand with our machine learning team to train our algorithms. Now, what is all that if you don't bring it to the real world? We have a very strong product drive. So not developing AI for the sake of novelty or a cool thing to show at the next meeting, but really developing it in a way that brings real value to the industry and brings real impact. And I really believe it is the intersection of these three things that has allowed us to deploy AI at scale across the world today. Now, our product suite spans the claims workflow. We deploy the same core technology in multiple ways to plug into the workflows of, of carriers and other players. One type of product we have is something we call AI review. This is a product that looks at estimates that are written by third parties or written in-house and checks for accuracy. Another product we have is called AI triage. This, this product looks at photos of cars and decides, is this a total loss? Is this repairable? How severe is the damage? We also have an AI estimating product. And this product uses AI to write estimates at first notice of loss based on photos. Today, I actually will not show you these products. What I'll do is show you the, the technology behind the scenes, the core AI, how it's looking at the detail of every picture and making these decisions. Our products take multiple inputs into consideration. You start with one photo and you have image classifiers, classification algorithms. Identify the parts in the photo, assess the damage to those parts, and figure out how to repair them. Now, as you can imagine, one photo of a car is not enough. That is just one angle. You need to do this across multiple photos. So our software uses multi-photo reasoning. In addition to all that, photos alone are also not enough. You need non-visual inputs. The availability and cost of parts, labor rates, paint types, all of these things are incorporated into our technology to get to the best output for our customers. But today, we will just focus on the photo analysis. Now, I, 
I'm sure you all know this, there is a lot, of, a lot of hype around AI in our industry today. How many folks here have had a conversation about AI in the last 24 hours? Raise your hand. The vast majority, I would say. A lot of excitement. Now, when someone tells you they have AI, how do you know it's the real thing? You test it. You test it on examples it has never seen. And that's what we'll do today. So I will find photos on Google of damaged vehicles. I'll put them through our AI. We'll see what it says. And then you guys will test it. So you'll pick the photos, we'll put them in, and we'll see what comes out. Sound good? All right. Here we go. This is, again, this is a preview of our damage classifiers, the core classification algorithms. So I'm going to uh, open up Google. And look for damaged vehicles. I have a number of them here. We can pick any of these and put this into the AI. Uh, let's start with this one. Clearly, very damaged car. Uncontrolled conditions, somewhere in a parking lot, different levels of lighting. The AI needs to make sense of all of this to come to conclusions. Let's put it in and see what comes out. Okay. So as you can see, this photo went up to our classifiers in the cloud, our algorithms. Those algorithms, in seconds, looked at the photo, identified the relevant parts, so the hood, the grill, the lamps, the bumper, the fender, clearly a frontal impact. It asked, do these need to be replaced or can they be repaired? And for the majority of these, it is highly confident that this, these need to be replaced. Very fast conclusion. It is also actually estimated the labor required to replace these parts. Now at this point, the AI only has this one photo. It does not know the year, make, model. It doesn't have repair methodologies behind it. It is estimating based on this one image. The reason it can do that without knowing the year, make, model is that our algorithms are year, make, model universal. The core photo technology can look at, at new years, new makes, new models it hasn't seen before and come to conclusions. We combine that then with information like the VIN, other non-visual aspects, to refine these estimates. But as you can see, the AI has a strong starting point off of just one photo. Let's do a few others. Maybe this one. Okay. And here, by the way, you can see there, there's interesting glare on the hood up at the top right there. So, not sure how the AI deals with that. Could think it's damage. There, clearly a parking lot, there's some shrubbery in the background. Entirely uncontrolled photo environment. This could be taken by a claimant, could be taken by a shop, could be taken by a tow truck. Anyone can take this photo and our AI will make sense of it. And here you can see it very quickly identified that this damage is here to the, the front left. The left fender needs to be replaced, the bumper, the headlamp. But these other parts nearby, the grill, the front door, the hood, are actually intact. No replacements needed. As you can see, these photos, pretty banged up cars. So why don't we look for something a little lighter? Maybe lighter damage here. Okay. All of these are pretty bad. Maybe we can start with this one. So this one is interesting because you have many vehicles in the photo. You have about half a dozen vehicles in the background. So the AI needs to make sense of this and figure out which vehicle it's supposed to focus on. You also have very abrasive lighting on the left side and stark shadows on the front. The AI needs to make sense of that. There's also this stripe on the hood the AI needs to figure out, is that for cosmetic reasons, or is that actually damage? Let's put that in. Okay. So the AI here identifies that the damage is primarily to the front door. It's clearly a bad hit there, but all the adjacent panels are intact. 
This is not a common car, a Dodge Challenger. I don't know if any of you have ever driven one. I haven't. But there it is. The AI again, year make model universal, can make sense of this photo. So as I mentioned, I think this will be more fun if you all pick the photos. So can I have a volunteer? All right. Would you like to pick a photo for us? Maybe something resembling a claim photo. This one right here. All right, let's see. So this one is interesting. It is a close-up, so we'll see what the AI does there. It's, it usually starts with the four corners, but we'll see what it does of the, of the close-up on its own. There are other vehicles in the photo as well. Uh, so we'll see what it, what it does there. Okay. Again, very quickly, it recognized that this is a rear bumper that's heavily damaged, needs to be replaced. Uh, it sees damage to the, to the lamp as well, up there in the corner. And it, it thinks the quarter panel is probably repairable, but likely it, it again would look for more photos. It's looking for that full claim pack. But it gives you a starting point just with that. How, how about another one? You signed up for a few. That's right, you. <laughs> yeah. With the truck next to it. Uh, this one. This one. Okay. Let's see. So this is interesting. Um, Clearly heavily damaged car. I can barely recognize that this is the front of a car. It's mangled. There is a truck next to it, as you said, so the AI will need to discern the truck bed from this vehicle. It's being towed. There's a tow truck in the back. There are some people as well, some trees. All external contacts that the AI must separate from the vehicle itself. Let's see. And there it is. So it recognizes that this is indeed the front of the car, uh, the hood needs to be replaced, headlamps are both damaged, fender needs to go, same thing with the bumper. Even in the absence of, of some of these parts, so there, there's no right headlamp here, it knows that this vehicle will need a new one. And in part that is because it's looking not, not just at the lamp itself, it's looking at the surrounding parts. So it knows that when you have this type of, of curvature, for example, to the front bumper, it's likely that the left light is also affected. The same type of reasoning that an appraiser would do. How about one more? This one? Cheapest cars in Nigeria is the caption of this photo. This should be interesting. Uh, and there's, there's a timestamp here. This photo is from 2009. I think this was scanned, potentially. This actually reminds me. The ability of an AI to deal with low quality photos is paramount because you'll get all kinds of photos. You'll get scans of analog photos from a decade ago. You'll get photos that are 20 kilobytes, thumb, thumbnail, all kinds of things. So not sure what this will do, but let's see. Okay. So again, here, frontal right impact. AI has quickly realized that the right fender, the front door, the right lamp needs to be replaced. The hood adjacent. But it is actually OK. The impact has been lower. So it makes sense of, of the vehicle. It ignores the timestamp, which is good. It ignores the vehicles in the background, ignores the trees. Uh, the Nigerian context doesn't seem specific to this at all. But there it is. Thank you for that. So if we then go back, what do you do with this technology in the real world? Well. Interestingly enough, applying AI is not something you do off the shelf. It is not downloading Google Maps onto your phone. It takes a battle-tested playbook to really capture AI value in your organization. You need to train your folks. You need to get buy-in. You need to get IT on board. And what's really beneficial is having a partner who can do that, someone who's tried it before. As an example, we think of, of a deployment in three steps. We start off with something we call calibration. We take our base AI models that have been trained on millions of examples in the past, 
and we look at your appraisal standards and we see how they compare. Now, appraisal is appraisal, but ultimately the starting point of every organization is different. And we need to understand where you're coming from to make sure that, that our AI reflects your standards appropriately. So that's calibration. We then go live on your claims. We actually pilot on a subset of your workflow. So we'll deploy in the US in maybe two states, in Canada, in a few provinces, to really see, is the workflow working out? Are your people capturing value? How can we continue to improve? And then, about four to six months after we've begun, we scale. So your value capture here begins in the pilot, most likely, about three, four months in, and actually scales across your full claim volume in four to six months. What does all of this come to? What happens when you deploy real AI in the real world? You get real impact. You get accuracy. Ultimately, appraisal is as much art as it is science, and humans will differ, even within your own organizations. One of the, of the good things about algorithms is that they're incredibly consistent. You show the same car to the same algorithm day in, day out, it'll produce the same appraisal. Not true for humans. So with better consistency and better accuracy, you can get up to 3% of total repair cost savings across your APD book. You also get much greater transparency so that the AI gives you robust data and allows reporting. We do live reporting on key metrics like staff performance, shop performance, and overall value capture. You, of course, get automation. That's one of the goals. In certain use cases, you can automate processing on up to 80% of your claims. Think what that would actually mean for your organization. And then, of course, this leads to efficiency. Significant reduction in appraisal cycle times because you, ha you have an AI that can do this task in seconds versus half an hour, 45 minutes. That then translates to much happier customers. Your customers get their cars back faster because you're able to process them faster. They get them back repaired correctly and safely. Now, if I ask you to take away a few things from, from the last 20 minutes, it'll be this. There is a lot of hype around AI today, but real AI is deployed in the real world and processing hundreds of thousands of claims. Organizations are undertaking this around the world, across North America, Europe, Asia. And the ones who are starting the AI journey are learning four to five times faster than their peers. That creates a very defensible lead. Ultimately though, this comes back to the thing that I think we all care most about. That's helping your customers get back on the road more quickly and more safely. Thank you.